Hi, this is Steve Harris with MuseThemes.com. Let's have a look at an awesome new widget called the Full Screen Thumbnail Gallery. So what this is, is it's a thumbnail gallery with a kind of carousel or scrolling thumbnail area on the bottom. So you can't make anything like this in Muse. The thumbnail section actually responds to your mouse movement. So if you move over to the right side, the carousel follows along. You can, of course, click on an image for it to reveal full screen. And if you move your cursor off the thumbnail area, it hides completely. So it can show your image really well without any distractions. We also, of course, have the option up in the top left for a caption on an image. We have forward and back buttons, which you can customize. And this is a really nice feature. Up in the top right, we have a controller for the image size. So you'll notice that if I click on this, what it does is it allows you to view the image without any cropping. So this is the image at kind of its original size in the browser. If we click the button again, then what we get is a full screen version. So of course this image is cropped on the top and bottom. So it's a really powerful widget, nothing like this in Muse. And let me show you how we make it work. So let's go ahead and jump into Muse. And I'm just on a blank site here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see. And we'll go to our library panel in the Muse Themes toolbox, and number 46 is the full screen thumbnail gallery. So we'll drag that on the page. Okay, so now that that's on the page, um, I'll show you these two little components. So let's zoom in a little bit again, and you'll see how you have this upper component, which looks like a gear, and that's the controller widget. And below we have the loader, the image loader. So the interesting thing about this widget and the reason that we made these two little previews like this is because you need to make sure that you have this gallery controller on top of the image loader. If you ended up with it like this, the widget won't work properly. The code needs to load in a very specific order. So just make sure they're kind of fitted together. There's a little notch in here and everything should work perfectly. So once we've got this out on the page, let's have a look at some of the options in the panel. If we click on the top, panel or the top controller, you can see that we have all of the setup options. So we've got the caption controls, the fonts, the colors. We have things like opacity settings. And then below that we have the slider options, which are the areas where you can control whether you want custom buttons. And you can actually set the widget to transition in a couple of different styles and at different speeds. So it's really powerful. The widget below, which is the actual loader widget, is just set up for you to be able to load in multiple images. So you can see that the loader image here has up to 10 images. And if you actually duplicate this loader, you can have as many images as you want. It will just keep importing them into the gallery. So it's a really great widget and there's lots of control. So let's take a quick look at this panel here and we'll set something up. So the first thing we need to do is, as with any of our gallery widgets, we need to add files for upload. And let's select a set of files. So we've got book, comp, deck, and door. So we're gonna add those four files. Now on the image loader, I'm just gonna make sure that we've got four enabled and we're going to go book.jpg. Then we've got comp.jpg and deck and door. And of course we could go ahead and enter in custom captions for those, but for the purpose of this demo, we'll just leave them out. Okay, so now that those are in, let's just preview this in the browser and see if it works. Okay, so we've got the gallery set up in its most basic format. You can see that the thumbnail carousel is on the bottom. We've got forward and back buttons that seem to be working nicely, and we can control the image sizing just like that. So right out of the box, the widget works really well, but we can do some really heavy customization to this if we need to set anything up. So let's look at this top controller, which is the kind of first widget on the page, and let's run through the options quickly. We of course have the image caption font, which is Arial set to this case. We could set it to something like Open Sans. One thing I do want to point out though is with these font names, sometimes the font name as you would see it in the menu in Muse isn't the exact font name as it is in the CSS. So for example, Open Sans is actually Open Dash Sans. Or there's a font called Trebuchet, which is Trebuchet-MS technically, although you may see it in the font menu as just Trebuchet alone. So that's something to be aware of. For now, I'm gonna leave it as Arial. Then we have image caption color. Right now it's set to white. Font size, we, we all know what these options do. And then we have an image caption background. So right now this is set to black, but let's just go ahead and set this to blue. 
Okay, now we have a background opacity. So if I go back in the browser here, you'll see that the area behind the caption actually has a little bit of a transparent effect to it. So we can remove that altogether by using those opacity controls. I'm just gonna leave that set to its default option. Next, we have the image thumbnail options. So we can set the thumbnail opacity to something a little bit less, or if you want them a little bit stronger. Let's go to 0.5. Now we have a thumbnail background color and a thumbnail background opacity. If I go into the browser here, you'll see that there is actually a background behind these thumbnails. Right now it's set to black, but it is a little bit transparent and you can see the photos below. So I think that's a great way for it to be in front of your images, but not so strong and heavy that it's really distracting. So let's go ahead and jump back into Muse and we can leave those settings as they are right now. Now below that we have thumbnail border color thumbnail border size, this is in pixels. And so you can see right now on these, they have a white border and this is about five pixels. So if you wanted to do something really dramatic, you could up that border size significantly. Now let's have a look at the other options we have for actually controlling the size of the thumbnails themselves. So if we like a really small thumbnail, we might wanna set the thumbnail width to let's say 100 and the thumbnail height to 100. And now let's preview this site in the browser again and see how it looks. There you go. So the thumbnails don't look very good because they're at a little bit of an odd aspect ratio for the images. However, you have very specific control over the size of these thumbnails. And if you have a very large gallery where you need tons of photos, you might want a smaller thumbnail so that this carousel scrolls across. Let's jump back into Muse and have a look at the rest of the options. We also have a margin from the bottom. Right now it's set to 60 pixels and you can see that area is this area at the bottom of the browser window here. So if we set this to 10 pixels, the thumbnail gallery would float much closer to the bottom. Let's do that for example purposes. So we'll go 10 and we'll preview another page in the browser. And there, now you can see they're nice and tight to the bottom of the page. The final area in our controller widget that we need to look at here is for the previous and next buttons and some other setup controls. So we have the ability to enable or disable the buttons entirely, which for most galleries like this, you're probably going to want to leave them on. But we've also built into the widget the ability for you to use keyboard navigation. So we can just hit the forward and back keys on our keyboard and the gallery will scroll through. We also have here the button type. So right now we have default button and we tried to make the default button really stylish and nice. So you can see they're just small, tasteful arrows. But if you wanna use something that's a little bit more branded to your site, you can go ahead and change this to custom button. And below you'll see these two boxes that say previous button image and next button image. You can change those to whatever you need. You just need to add those files for upload. So I'm gonna leave in the default buttons because we've used this before on many of our widgets. We also, of course, have our button icon color and our button background color and our button opacity, which do the exact same things as our thumbnail options above. So you can see that the forward and back buttons here do have a black background and they are slightly transparent, so you can see through it. So full control over that. And in the last few settings here, we have the slider view mode. So that allows us to set up kind of the initial view of the slider. So if you want your slider by default to have that scale to fit option where you're seeing the full image always on the page with the potential for black boxes on the sides or top, then you can set it that way. I recommend leaving it at full screen because I think it looks best, but you also have the ability to set the original image size if you want. So if you don't want any scaling to happen. Now we have transition effects. We can have it fade in or we can have it slide. Let's just change this to slide. Now we can set the slide or transition direction. Let's have it slide down for this example. And then we have the transition speed. So 1000, this is in milliseconds. So let's go up to 2000, something nice and slow. Last thing I'm gonna do is just change the thumbnail width a little bit higher because I don't like those thumbnails being so squished. Okay, so we've set this up. We've customized it to our liking. Let's preview it one last time. So the thumbnails look much better and you can see our background slid up from the bottom. And if we click next, it slides up again. And as you can see, the transi transition speed on this is quite slow. So you might wanna go with something a little bit faster, but it's a fantastic widget. I think it's gonna work really well for a lot of various uses, whether it's photography or portfolio. And let us know if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks again for watching and best of luck.